Hi, this is Jim's Little Boat, and I, of course, am Jim. This mess in the background is the Ugly Dinghy Project, and we'll be featuring that in a later video. What I wanted to do today is just share with you a few ideas about how to handle the lines in the cockpit when the wind blows hard. And I'm going to say it a couple of times because it's so important. Never make fast the sheets of a small boat. And today we'll kind of focus on the main sheet and that cleat, the jib cleats, and how to move the traveler when the wind's blowing really hard. Uh, wasn't very sunny today, so I did this little intro here at home. So I hope this information is useful to you. It's mostly for beginners. Old timers will have their own variations on the way to do these things. But the first time you're out there in a 25 knot gust hits you during a 30 degree wind shift, you might find these little tips useful. This main sheet cleat has a tendency to cleat all by itself, no matter what you do. And so you have to kind of do that when you want to uncleat it or that, which normally is no big deal. But when the wind starts to blow, I want to suggest that you do this. When the wind starts blowing a little harder and you need to spill wind, it's best if it's not cleated and you secure the sheet in your steering hand. I like to keep it right under my hand like that. That has two benefits. If it isn't cleated and I want to spill wind, I can just loosen my grip and it'll pull out the sheet. Or if it has accidentally cleated, I know exactly where to go to get it. I know exactly where to go to push down and continue steering. Here's a little trick that will help you a lot when you're trying to use the Traveler. When there's pressure on the mainsail, it's almost impossible to pull this car over. Very, very tight and you, it's very hard to work. But if you're doing a series of long tacks, there's an easy way to do it. So let's say we're just finishing up our port tack. We know we're going to go to starboard and we know we want the boom on the other side of the boat. So before you tack, loosen this and let the wind pressure push it all the way over for you and then cleat it. Then while the pressure is pushing the boom over to port, go ahead and cleat the port side of the traveler. Spend a minute or two talking about cleats, jib winches, and jib sheets. This is the one that comes with the boat. It's a jam cleat. Some people call it a clam cleat. And it's a pretty good cleat, except that it does have a tendency to slip. And that's not necessarily all bad. The one on the right I added, and you'll notice it has a pedestal to keep it from getting an override on the jib winch. That is a great little cleat except that when the wind blows really hard it's almost impossible to release. One day we were out here heeled over about 25 degrees and we could not get that jib to release. I thought sure one of us was going to go overboard but we finally did get it to release and now the rule on this boat is do not use that cleat if the wind is over five knots. That's uh, just for single handing and light winds and we're going to add one other cleat to this boat we're going to add another clam cleat pointed that direction, or jam cleat if you want to call it that. And that is for the crew who's tending the jib sheet. I like him to sit as far forward as possible. So it will look like this boat has a weird collection of cleats when we're all done. But uh, it, that will work for us, and keeping the weight forward really is helpful. It speeds up tacking quite a bit. So that's kind of my thoughts on jib sheet cleats. So this is the value of that mid-boom sheeting. I'm sitting in the middle of the cockpit, actually more forward. I can still reach the rudder, no problem. And yet the boat is quite ballast. It's worth a hundred bucks or whatever they charge you for that little piece of work.